tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. For this week's episode, if you're friends with me on Facebook, I actually shared the poster for today. And my caption was, okay, I'm gonna be five years younger tomorrow, which is today. <laughs> and that is because our guests for today, um, they're part of an organization called Kids for Kids. And they're part of the younger generation of the youth. Um, so I'm really excited to get to talk to them. And I'm also excited for them to share their projects. You know, at such a young age, um, it's really inspiring. Um, I got to talk to them, of course, before the show. And um, they have, they've done um, great projects and they're currently still doing it. So um, let's not prolong this anymore. I want to introduce to you the officers of Kids for Kids. So first, we have the co-founders. Co sorry, they're actually sisters. Their names are Bella and Tasha Tanutko. So again, they're the co-founders of Kids for Kids. Are they here, Bella and Tasha? There we Hi. go. Hi, girls. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Okay. Us. Of course, thank you also for um, <laughs> accepting my <laughs> invitation. Okay, let me introduce your other officers as well. Next, we have Daniela Pedrosa. She is um, an internal strategies head. Hi, Daniela. Hello. Hi, Daniela. Okay, <laughs> then we also have um, Annika Raffer. She's also an internal strategies head. Annika here. There we go. Hi, Annika. And un okay, then we have Gino Yang. I think he's the only boy for today. He is um, the Sustainable Strategies Head. Where's Gino? There. Hey guys, what's up? Hi, Gino. And of course, we have Regina Bonoan. She's also an Internal Strategies Head. Hi. Hi, Gina. Okay, so there you go. These are the um, core team members of Kids for Kids. So today we're actually full house. So I'm I'm excited to get to talk to each one of you. So okay, let's start. So for our first segment, um, I wanna talk about basically the organization and the background. So maybe we could talk to Tasha, Bella, and Regina um, mm -hmm. about the organization. So maybe you could give us like the story, basically. How did you come up with Kids for Kids? Okay, so Kids for Kids began when I was 13, my sister was 15. Basically, um, throughout their childhood, we'd always be going um, to different outreaches um, to help out different communities when we were younger with our Lola and our mom. And then um, when we went to school, we wanted to, of course, like, engage in more outreach work. But then, however, the ones in school were very limited. And we thought that we could kind of like help more, like our capacity to help was like um bigger. So that's when me and my sister decided to start just like a mini after school extracurricular thing where we would like go out with their friends and just help out different communities. And then from there it kind of grew. So basically when we first started Kids for Kids, we were like a group of five and it was a completely set of like different people. <laughs> and then from there we kind of just invited our friends and then it kind of grew as what Bella was saying. So we launched it basically in 2013 with our first event called Takbo. So Takbo was a race to raise funds for UNICEF's 1,000 Days of a Child campaign. And from there, we realized that the impact of the youth was super great in terms of how they could call their friends and have fun, but at the same time give back. Because like from the planning, to like the right sponsorship letters, to like meeting with um the sponsors, all us doing it, like all, all us teenagers, we're also in high school. Yeah. It's really like a big experience from us and obviously a big like learning um process thing. So um with that we're able to um get around three hundred um youth volunteers to help out with the event as well as we're able to raise over three hundred thousand between the seven thousand days of the child program. So that was like our first big event and that was the launch of our organization because we were like, wow, there's so many kids who out here willing to help if giving is something that is fun and exciting for like overwhelming and unexpected. Like we did not um really like expect yeah. like that much people who like wanted to sign up 
And then at that time, so when we realized we wanted to promise kids a better future, because all we were doing was different outreaches, we even went to Giwan. We painted an evacuation center. So this is the um the province that was first hit for um Typhoon Yolanda at that time. And when we okay. went there, we realized we wanted to promise kids a better future. We also needed to promise them a better environment to live in. And that's when we became also country representatives of this other organization called Bye Bye Plastic Bags. So okay. Bye Bye Plastic Bags is an organization that was founded in Bali, Indonesia, and it was also founded by two sisters who are the same age as me and Bella. And then when we got in touch with them, they were super happy to have us become their Philippine chapter. So when that happened, we basically started kind of moving towards as well integrating um, environmental awareness in our programs. And so we decided to launch this first event called Kamalayan, which means awareness. And what we basically did was we put together a two-week art festival that basically showed people youth advocacy towards um, climate action. And at the time in 2016, not much people understood sustainability. There wasn't really a movement for environmentalism, and it was something that should have been talked about already at that time, since climate change is such a pressing problem. And so that kind of transitioned into many other things that we got into. It wasn't just anymore about helping kids in small outreaches. It became big fundraisers. It became involving a whole community as well as partnering up with so many different people. Because we wanted to make the youth realize, wanted to um, kind of engage them in the con- conversation of conservation, whether it be environmental or marine conservation. And that's when we were like, okay, we have to educate them. And so we thought art was the best kind of language as well to educate um, the youth on like the realities of what's going on. And then from there, we kind of saw like one year, I think this 2018, um, Shergal became like the hot spot for all the tourists. So you're like, okay, if there's an influx of tourists, there's obviously an influx of waste. And so we actually partnered up with organizations in Shergal because um, we wanted to learn how they were kind of managing all the Um, abrupt um, overflow of waste in the tiny island. So we went there and we partnered up with these organizations and we saw all their grassroots initiatives, whether it was like upcycling the waste, using the waste as a resource. So you're like, okay, how come the people in Manila, they don't really know about like these kind of everyday solutions that we could do with the waste. So we wanted to kind of bridge the gap between what professionals or experts or other organizations were doing and what the youth know and what the youth Um, should learn. So that's when we, after Shigao, we decided to come up with this, this entire event called Habilin, which means to give something, someone something for safekeeping. So it's an entire convention where we invited different speakers um, from different marine um, conservation um, organizations and all these um, kind of environmental activists to talk about the realities of, of our plastic pollution here in the Philippines. To the, so we had over 200 youth members and that's how we kind of started this entire Habilin movement where it was kind of education um, to bridge the gap between um, the adults and us youth. And so from there I guess when we launched Habilin back in 2018, we still kind of did a lot of different things and when we realized we were doing so many different things, we needed to figure out the way to bridge all of this together. We even ended up launching like last year this brand called Ritaso, which is basically upcycling. It was an initiative to upcycle textile waste that was um, donated to us by different local brands. And then from all of that, basically, we were saying we were doing so many different things, but there wasn't one culminating factor. And that's when we came up with Tayo. So Tayo is basically um, an umbrella company that talks about sustainability. And we basically have this tagline where we want creativity and sustainability to meet so that people understand their need for positive change. So Reg can take over here and explain Tayo and like what it has been doing also. Okay, so just to connect um, Tayo with everything that we've done in the past, connected to past projects. So Ben and Tasha have, have already mentioned and put a lot of premium on how we started um, with our focus really um, using creativity as a foundation because we also wanted this um, to be a platform to help um, express the youth. So what we decided to do was by getting um, just a bunch of our friends to do like a couple murals and then from then on we decided like okay why not also get graphic artists and different kinds of artists in all kinds of fields. So we decided to branch it out and have Tayo as our mother company for all our organizations and all our initiatives. 
So Tayo is the one that we that basically upholds all of the foundations. So we have under Tayo we have Kid for Kids, Bye Bye Plastic Bags, um, Kamalayan, Habilin, and Retaso. So what Tayo does right now is not only to overlook um, all of that, but then Tayo all, what we do is our main platform is Instagram. So we have different um, guests taking over right now with sharing like their different passions from like food to wellness and um, what they're doing right now during quarantine and everything that they're doing to get creative. So we also use this as a platform to kind of connect everything from creativity to sustainability. Um, a while ago, we, we already got a glimpse of Kids for Kids, what you guys basically do. Um, so now maybe um, you guys could talk about your current projects or maybe expound more on what you're doing for Kids for Kids. Sure. Okay, so I'll start first. Um, we'll talk about first Bye Bye Plastic Bags and then Annika will talk about Kids for Kids because Bye Bye Plastic Bags is our sister organization as mentioned earlier. So what we just what just happened actually in Bye Bye Plastic Bags was we celebrated the month of the oceans um, with an event called Lincoln and Kalikasan. So, um, oh, sorry, not Lincoln and Kalikasan. We renamed it to Vitera. Um, so what happened was we had a bunch of online Zoom classes, we had testimonies, we had Instagram takeovers, um, and we had a bunch of other forums. So just to quickly get into all of those, we had online we had online Zoom classes for three days. So it was World Environment Day, Oceans Triangle Day, and World Oceans Day. So for each of these, we got a bunch of representatives from a lot of organizations like Save Philippine Seas, um, LAMAV, Fund the Forest, Reef Check um, and other organizations. And then for the testimonies, we also got a bunch of representatives from Tai Pinas, Sea Movement, um, w- WWF Philippines, um, and LAMAB again. And then for the Instagram takeovers, we got people like Gab Paloma from Sustainable Co-, um, Co. And then Melati, who's also the Bye Bye Plastic Bags founder from Bali. And then also Jen Horn from Muni Philippines. And then for the forums, we had like a Love for Corals Zoom forum with WWF again and Kids for Kids and then Bye Bye Plastic Bags Us and CTI CFF and Sea Soldier North Sulawesi. And then we also had a Bye Bye Plastic Bags Global Forum. So as Tasha mentioned, we have a bunch of teams from all over the world. So we were able to get a few of those teams actually to join in a forum with us. So that was really cool. We got to hear about their initiatives and um, we also got to hear their perspectives on a lot of different issues worldwide. So it was really interesting. Um, and then we also had a Kids for Kids and Bye Bye Plastic Bags forum where a lot of people were able to ask us questions about our organizations and what we do and stuff. And then we also got, um, we also produced a 79 page information book, which was made by our research team. So it's really cool. It's all about the ocean. And if you guys want to check it out, it's actually for sale. You can find the details on our Instagram. It's 350 pesos. It's really informative and it was fact-checked and stuff. It was really cool. You should check it out. And then aside from Vitera, we had... Um, aside from Vitera, another one of our committees, the social media crew, um, is planning our publication. So we have a publication called Alon, which can be found on medium.com. And recently, I think just last week, we were able to deliberate and get our new roster of... Um, researchers, writers, and artists to make our publication. So that's all in the works right now and they're planning that, so it's really cool. And then lastly, our other project team, Coastal Crew, is planning a month-long sustainable cooking project where they'll get chefs and others who are helping farmers or those in the agricultural sector to discuss and show how to be sustainable when it comes to cooking and how to help those in agriculture in a sustainable way. Okay, so Annika and Daniela, you're both internal um, strategies head. Same with Regina. But Gino here, he is the sustainable strategies head. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Okay, so, um, what do you do as the sustainable strategies head? Okay, so like, I'm actually still included within the internal strategies group. But like, you might say like, my position's kind of unique because like, what I'm in charge of mostly is overseeing and making sure that 
everything is like on brand and sustainable because at the end of the day we have to enforce everything that we believe we have to be what we believe right so i'm kind of in charge of making sure that everything is by our standards everything is sustainable and we reduce our carbon footprint as much as possible okay so yeah. um the six of you um you're the core members are there more core members or this is it na talaga um like we kind of make up like the main internals and like we compose a lot of like the ideas for the org but then we do have subheads depending on the for example Anika's different uh kids for kids groups and then Daniela also has her respective heads for bye bye plastic bags okay okay now yeah. now I Gab, you know, I heard you mention on brand. I did not know that term up until I started working. So, you know, oh. it's, it's really, um, Gabby, galeng. I, I mean, no words. I have no words, really. Honestly. <laughs> so, um, I've, I mean, I've seen a lot of organizations. I personally have my own organization, and I know, um, it's, um, you know, it's still. We have our own struggles, but yeah. um, Kids for Kids has been here um, like since four four years ago, five, five. years ago, yeah. and you know it's really great that you're you're growing. I mean, eight hundred members, de ba? We have like fifteen members. Actually, actually, can can I introduce like actually one of like our other projects like? Since yeah, we're on the sure. topic of like, other small arts. Okay, so I think Tasha was talking about this small movement we started back in 2018. It's called Habilin. I, mm. I think, I'm not sure if you remember, but yeah, she mentioned it. Yes. So, like, what it started as was like a, an awareness movement, actually. And, like, back then we started it as an ocean awareness movement. But then, like, now, especially during quarantine, um, we noticed that there's so much, like, people who have, like, gone through. Uh, like self-realization, I guess, and like so many people are so into like starting new orgs or getting into sustainable culture. And Habilin is like we found that there's a way to move everything forward, like as a collective, not just. Um, we, we stressed so many times already how important collaboration is in making a change, and we really believe that like this is an, an individual movement. Like we all have to work together as a country as a world to make a, the world a better place and make necessary changes. So what we're coming up with is, we haven't launched it yet, but then what we're, we will do is okay. we're, we're going to start up a Facebook group and a networking platform for the youth because at this point, like the youth are so involved in so many things already and they're bound to be the future leaders, of course. So what we want to do is like get everyone connected before that point. So when we do reach that point, it's way easier to like make changes. So, so, yeah. Hearing all of this, I'm just so happy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, of course, yes, the environment is very, very important. But the fact, kasi, na you're aware of it at such a young age, um, and and that's really great, you know. And tama si Gino, like we are, yes, we. I'm also included. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So, um, that. Um, I hope the viewers that are watching, especially those of the younger generation, I hope you know you look up to these guys because they're really, <laughs> really making a change right now, yeah. and um, it's great. Good night. And if any of the viewers want to get involved in our projects, like just follow our social media accounts. Like it's so easy to get involved with us. Like maybe start join the movement. I guess right. Actually, I was gonna ask you. Um, yeah. how do you become a member for Kids for Kids? Okay, so Annika, do you wanna go through okay. that? <laughs> um, so we actually <laughs> have um, sign-ups at yearly, so it's only it's always in the beginning of the year. So it's so sad yeah, that like especially now I have so many people like want to help as much as they can, but we can't accept as many because it's a very tedious process. But um, you can still reach out to us. You can join the different workshops that we have. You can if you honestly if you have an idea and you can. Like message us or email us about it. We could probably work with you as well. Like it's really, really, we. I feel like one of the things that we value most is collaboration above all. And like at the end of the day, you don't actually have to be in. You don't have to be part of our volunteers, right? 
but of course, if you want to join, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> can, can I join? Can I be a member? Or am I like too old? Really? I can? <laughs> okay, great. I got to talk to the other officers of Kids for Kids. And they talked about their current projects and their future plans for Kids for Kids. This is really... Um, Honestly, like I have no words. Um, I personally am super inspired and um, super nakakatuwa in Tagalog. Super nakakatuwa to see um, these young um, youth really working super hard to really make a difference because they really believe in the advocacy. So you could see it. Uh, their their faces just light up every time they talk about it. So it's really nice to hear. Um, so I want to call all of them back. So we have Bella and Tasha. They're the co-founders. Um, we also have Annika, Gino, Daniela, and Regina. Okay, there's everyone. We are a full house today. Um, actually, this is the first time that I have six guests and this is the first time na full yung screen ko. But anyways, first of all, I just want to thank each one of you for um, coming to the show and talking about Kids for Kids. And I just want to say, um, you, um, you're you the first organization, or the first group first group of guests that I interviewed who are younger than me. Because usually, um, so yeah. far, <laughs> yeah. so, so, and you're my episode 10, uh, so which is great. So, yeah, because uh, I've been interviewing people who are my age or a bit older so i wanted to really also target the younger generation because um in the law actually when you say youth or the kabataan um it ranges from ages 15 up to 30. so it's a yeah. very, very yes. yes so um, <laughs> yeah, there there you go so there you know. yeah. um that's why i wanted to also um, interview Sana, a younger generation, and I'm so happy um, I found Kids for Kids. Okay, so my question is, um, now we know their ages, so it ranges from 17 up to 20. Um, starting, um, probably like starting your own organization or being an officer of this organization at such a, a young age, maybe you could give like your experiences and maybe um maybe advice also to to those who wanna also maybe start their own organization or um you know be an officer for an organization what can you um say so again let's start okay no let's start with um tasha and bella since they're the co-founders of kids for kids Um, okay, so uh, I guess, well, what do you, what me and Tasha always say that this entire organization thing is really a learning process mm-hmm. because um, up till now, we're still learning how to kind of go about um, kind of working together in terms of like um, kind of keeping 800 of our volunteers active and like um, thinking of all like these um, different initiatives in order to keep the ball rolling with everything. So I guess um, as um, leaders or as officers of an organization. Um, it really, I guess, it really depends on who you work with because for me, like, I get empowered by um, my team, like, the people I work with, like, their work ethic and how, like, they're very efficient. So we're really a work in progress, but then we are able to fix ourselves and get organized um, based on each other's um, energy in a way. Um, for me, Naman, I think it's actually really easy to start an organization. I mean, like you, everyone, like what we noticed over the break is that there are so many different organizations that ended up like popping out of nowhere. And mm-hmm. because of it, like nowadays you have social media, you can just make an Instagram account, get a bunch of friends, and then post on it. But I feel like there's a different take when you talk about sustainability, and that's what Kids for Kids and Tayo and everything we do is all for that. And I think that's why we kind of make sure that everything that we do is also sustainable in its own way. So even as a team, like we're such a diverse group and that's what kind of makes it work because not all of us are like 
being different ages also allows so many yeah. different perspectives. It really balances everything. Yeah, out and then like all kinds of interests also work because if pretend if all of us were we all just suck at math, then <laughs> that like there's a missing link there. So what we like about like having a youth organization is everyone's still in the midst of discovering what they like and the different passions and. Being with a diverse group of people really helps in motivating also other people to kind of get involved, no matter how young you are, how old you are. But it's everyone just doing the same thing, even if you all have different backgrounds. Oh, thank you so much for sharing, Tasha and Bella. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So I I really don't know. What I'm I'm just really so happy right now. Um, oh, I think we're <laughs> coming from. From you guys, so thank you for sharing. Um, maybe we can have Daniela next. Okay, so I feel like my advice would be to start small, but before starting, understand yourself first. I feel like it's really important that you, um, when making a change, you have to understand how you can make that change in the first place. So that's knowing your strengths, knowing what you're passionate about, knowing what you aren't passionate about, and like knowing what you aren't good at, so that you know already. How you can come into the game, of how you can be different, and how you can make a change that's specific to yourself and that works to your advantage. And start small because you can't um, come into something new starting with something so big. That, as Bella said, it's a learning process. So by starting small, you're gonna get to know the basics first, and then you can work your way up into creating something bigger. Like our organization has been running for five years, I think. Um, and in the five years, we gained like 800 um, volunteers, right? but that took a while, and it took a lot of effort. And we started small, so. And that came from the youngest. But I really agree, naman with Daniela. We all have to really start somewhere. And um, kids for kids, you guys started from somewhere. That's why. You know you are here today. Thank you so much, Daniela, for sharing. Sure. Okay. Um, Anik, any okay. words of um, advice? <laughs> so, um, short story lang kasi. Uh, I was one of the last ones to be part of the internal team. Like, <laughs> I started off as a volunteer a lot. Just, just a volunteer. So, um, my advice would really just to believe in yourself and to really just empower yourself as well and surround yourself with people who believe in you too because i feel like that's the most important thing um apart from knowing yourself i mean including including knowing yourself and knowing how to make a change um you also need to have that sense of passion within you and want to do it like the drive needs to be there and it's not something that people are just born with i feel like you people grow into that as well and um You can't do anything. You can't start anything if you don't believe in yourself first. So I feel like that's the best thing, as well as having people around you to support you with whatever you're, whatever you're doing. And even if like it's, even if you feel like you've been going so much, like it's important as well to like take breaks once in a while and really like being there for the team and for other people, so that you can work like in the most efficient way and follow whatever it is you want to create. Change part. Thank you so much, Annika, for sharing. <laughs> okay, um, next we have Gino, the only boy here today. Hello. <laughs> okay. So, so, while they were talking, I was thinking like I have like kind of two points like to share. Okay. My first point of advice is like don't be afraid to fail. Like don't be afraid to do something just because you think you'll fail. Like honestly, like we've been doing this for five years, and there's no way that we could have we could have like. Done everything perfectly. We, we, I'd say maybe a solid half of our projects didn't didn't go as planned. <laughs> so, but this all really helped us like to get to the point we are now. Like such a big organization trying out like I'd say bigger things, right? And then my second piece of advice is always like stand up for yourself when you're spreading your advocacy. It's like uh, oh my god, oh my god, it's like sometimes. <laughs> Talking to like adults is like the hardest thing in the whole world. Like <laughs> now it's not as hard because like we're twenty in our twenties now. But back when we were eighteen, oh my goodness! Like sometimes they thought like the only thing we knew was like the answer to one plus one, dude. Like, <laughs> 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 and, like, 
exactly. Yeah, like, but then like it's not like talking to you who's a news anchor that like can hold a solid conversation, you know. Like sometimes like talking to like older like generations like they they really undermine your value and i think like being a change maker and passionate about your advocacy like you really have to be able to like show other people that you're worth something and like it's very important to know like your self worth and the change you're making so yeah lang thank you for <laughs> all my other um <laughs> My other co-officers or co-workers, if you will, already said um, everything that was already important. But I just wanted to add um, to everything, of course, besides what they said, which was I completely agree with each one. Was how um, it. I think it's important to also start by having important conversations with your friends, conversations that have substance and conversations that can really. Start with something that can actually make a change because this is really where um, you'll be able to get ideas and learn more about people through their different passions. So, I guess by really starting that conversation with a friend or anyone in general will really get you up to it and get you to start working on it. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Another another statement that I strongly believe in. I actually had um, a guest a couple of episodes ago. Um, they're called One Minute Two for um, accepting my invitation, and you know I hope um, I could meet you guys um, in person after you know yeah. all of this, and we could get to talk more. But again, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed um, today's episode as much as I did. Again, Definitely. I feel stronger. <laughs> 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 yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you so thank much. You so much. Thank you so much. Thanks, Erica. All right, so there you go. That ends today's episode. Ah, I'm actually um, I'm pretty exhausted from talking to them. Parang they have so much energy, you know. The 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 younger generation they just give out so much energy, and <laughs> they got a lot of my energy today. So again, it's really just so inspiring to see um. The younger gener, the younger generation, and um, the older um, generation really um, make. Stay tuned for the next episode only here on Z eighty one Radio Manila.